so we're excited about the game and uh, ready to go. Any questions that you all have? Uh, Cole Anthony being back in the lineup. What does he bring to them? What have you seen he's, he's been able to do? Does he look healthy to you? I mean, as far yeah, as no, he's you know he's a top ten talent uh, in the collegiate ranks, and uh, uh, yeah, they've been hurt with a lack of continuity. You know, they they have a really good team, but you take out you know that important piece for a significant amount of time. You know, that's going to hurt any team, and getting them back. You know, there's a, a period of readjustment, you know, the, uh, and it's just a matter of how long that will that will be. Uh, but uh, with his level of talent, he'll do that uh, quicker than most. And it just gives them uh, a player who's an ultimate competitor and uh, big time talent to go along with their two bigs who really you know, they match up with anybody in the country. So uh, uh, we think they're a really good team and they're going to continue to get better now that uh, Cole is back. Knowing Trey as well as you do, do you, do you think he's kind of relishing this opportunity to go? Well, I think, I think Trey has to approach any point guard like as a challenge. You know, that's, that's what makes them. It's kind of like the same thing that people would say about the game. Well, you're going to do more in this game. Well. If you haven't learned to do more, you're not going to do more in this game. You know, doing more is a is a habit, and you know Trey plays hard every game, so he's not going to play harder in this game. He, hopefully, he'll play as hard, and and but he knows that he's going to uh, be against a, an outstanding talent. How much more has to do about two bigs? Do you, we don't kind of play Brooks and Baycott together. What's the best way to counter that? Uh, I go. Like this, <laughs> um, the uh, now the, the biggest thing is is how you uh, react on the boards because they're two uh, two of the best rebounders, offensive rebounders in the country, and they're the best offensive rebounding team. So the main thing is you know we have to have five guys on the defensive boards, you know, trying to make sure they don't get many second and third shots. Uh, you know, to me that's the the biggest thing that those guys uh, do. I mean, they're two outstanding players. Mike, how has the rivalry changed, well, the build-up leading to the games change from early on when maybe it wasn't as much TV involvement and, and hyping this up as the best rivalry in sports and everything like that? Like, do you, do yeah. you see big differences? or? I don't see a big difference. I, I, I think that, uh, to me, it, it's really a celebration of excellence. Uh, you uh, you have two of the top five programs in the history of the game, and really two of the elite programs in all of sport. You know, uh, playing against one another, and uh, you know the the level of talent that's been on the court for the forty years that I've been here is staggering. I mean, it, and so. Uh, it produces great games, and as a result, people anticipate, there's an, an, an anticipation uh, for that level of game. And then with the proximity of, of the two schools, the excellence of the two schools, and, and the fact we're in the same conference, and you do it at least twice, uh, you know, that's a lot, and it's really been the, the key factor in the advancement of our conference in you know not just basketball but everything you know TV wise you know we're always these games are never in January you know they're always in February they're in stakes and uh, and and they're always placed in prime time and they have the, the biggest viewership and uh, so that's what I've seen for 40 years, and that if you're a business and you have it, you have uh, something in your business. The ACC has it that can draw that amount of attention and excellence, and in both these programs, I mean we've won double-digit national championships together in the 40 years. Come on, <laughs> that's it's very unusual. It, it's nothing like it. 
And so when they say there's no rivalry like, well, there's no game like it. There's no, there, because it brings, it's a game that brings the past to the present. And I like, I, I love that, you know, because that, that's just good for the, for both of our programs, good for the ACC, but I, it, it's really the celebration of those brands, not a celebration of a player. And that's the thing that has separated college basketball from the NBA. Although, because how, how the college game is marketed over the last decade, it's lent itself more towards pro. Whereas this game celebrates you know, Duke Carolina, Holy Macro. And, and uh, uh, that's a stage that I hope the game will always be at. Wouldn't you say, though, that it's become less acrimonious over those so, less acrimonious over those 40 years? What do you mean by that? Is that put it in uh, basketball coaches' terms? Okay. Uh, I think you're swearing at me, by the way. Just so you know. I was ready to get up here. It, it doesn't seem as antagonistic. Yeah, well, I think the respect that we have for each other uh, overcomes the, the venom of our fans. You know, uh, look, Roy and I know him. You know, we serve the game together, and we're both very lucky to be in the positions we're, we're in. But we also know uh, how good the other guy is, the other team, the other program. And uh, I, I think that's healthy. You know, the, you know, that doesn't mean, look, we've had hellacious games, but we have not had the side shows. It's really kind of been sport at the level you, you would hope it would be, you know, as, uh, the, the class, the dignity, uh, and uh, the fervor to win, but still keeping all those other things in, in place. So uh, uh, I, think, I think we're in a good place with that. Coach, with uh, UNC, Uncharacteristic for them this year, they committed a number of turnovers, and certainly some of that has to be with Cole being yeah, out yeah. for 11 games. But you guys obviously pride yourself on being strong <laughs> defensively and forcing turnovers. Do you think in this weekend's matchup that can be more of a strength towards you guys? Well, the fact that he's back, it's less of a strength for us because he, he he's strong with the ball, and uh, he's he's a, an outstanding competitor, and he's a. You know, people talk about a score, I mean, he can really pass. And uh, so, I think it's obvious that the team that will rebound the best and turn the ball over the least will have the best chance to win. So, we got to keep up with them on the boards, and hopefully we can force a few more turnovers than, than they force against us. You spoke of UNC's continuity, but you've also were kind of getting yours together as we go to have one little more out, but he's yeah. back. Um, how do you see that coming together? I mean, we still have some time, but what, what do you see? Yeah, the no, of we you know we got knocked back a little bit, you know, uh, because he was emerging right at that point. So we're you know a month later, we're kind of doing that. But uh, he, he, I'm I've been really pleased with how he's played, and he he has shown no signs of favoring the hand. Uh, our, our staff and he did a great great job of him staying in condition. Uh, he worked every day uh, in different forms of con uh, condition, and so it uh, he's not out, he's not out of shape. You know, he's in very very good shape, and his body's fresh. It's just a matter of getting accustomed to uh, to the hand, and I think he's he's done a good job with it. So we have to keep growing. You know, we're, we're now moving on and hopefully getting a little bit better. Uh, he adds that, not just depth, but he adds that athletic and ball handling depth, uh, which we missed for that uh, about a month. Is it, was your, is it difficult when you're doing film study of a team that's had Cole Anthony in for 11 and out for 11 to sort of do the normal scout that you would do for tendencies and so forth? Yeah, well, you don't, you know, I think, yes, but, you know, in other words, the, there are not as many games to watch. 
but the games that there are, you watch them closely and then you try to anticipate as, as they're moving forward what changes they might make as a result of what they've seen in the last two games. And uh, because, they, you know, it, he doesn't just come back and they're, you know, this cohesive unit right away. That, you know, we didn't have that. That's how, that's what happened with us with Zion. You know, he's out for six, six seven games and we never got back to the level that we were when he got hurt. So they still have a period of time to get there and, uh, um, and don't move quickly because that, you know, they have a, you know, they're a program, they're not a team. And they, they have immense pride in what they do. So we know playing them, we're gonna get an amazing effort from, from them. And uh, they do they do some things better than we do, and uh, yeah, I, I think you don't look at records because the team that we're playing against that's not their record. You, you know, they're uh, they're actually forming kind of like a new team, and uh, they have good pieces. You mentioned the rebounding with their bigs. Yeah. How important that'll be. But Garrison Brooks, especially, how have you seen his game evolve? It seems like he's no. Much he's, more he's, been, he's had a you know a legitimate all conference year. You know he'll be I would think be considered uh, you know the uh, in recently for him the, what he did against NC State was remarkable. He he was uh, he just when you watch the tape of that game he just jumps out at you with his. Emotion, yeah, he, just his play. He uh, he had a magnificent game against against them, and uh, uh, so he's he's and he's different than the other bigs in the conference. Uh, he's expanded his game to face the basket. He, he obviously runs so well, and uh, but uh, he plays with great passion, and uh, I, I, I think it gives his teammates energy. Uh, we'll ask about Matthew. He's been starting every game. Sometimes his minutes are a lot lower than other games. Right. Is there something missing from his game that you want him to develop? No, the other team him? does. You know, go small. You know, tell him not to do that. Okay. And uh, uh, when they go small, then we got to be careful when we have two bigs there. And uh, you know, even BC sometimes Mitchell was the small was the biggest. So you know, you have Virginia Tech. You have you have teams that. Can go all small, or at least four, and then you know what we've tried to do is uh, react accordingly with our depth. And uh, you know, you know, the, the two key guys are Trey and Vernon. Yeah, you know, they have to be on. And then Cassius has been; he can play in anything. And and then really, you try to figure out after that, you know, how we uh, how we match up. Or how we can cause a matchup problem for our opponent, and that's the way we've tried to do the whole season. Speaking of BC, was that another example of having to fight against human nature for your team? Yeah, and and against a team that's playing well. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, I told the team. Yeah, in football, it's ironic that we're playing up in Boston uh, or near Boston. You know, during the football season. You know, New England beat Miami, the Dolphins, by 40 points or something like that. And in the last game of the season, the Dolphins beat them in what took away a bye. And I said, you know, look, this happened, teams change. The team, and then we tried to show them how they changed. You know, they were beating Louisville in, at home. You know, they, uh, they, and they just came off the win over North Carolina, which is a huge away. It's a huge thing. So you, you get a you get a team that's in a different spot than New Year's Eve, and they had been off for ten days. Okay. And now they're you know. And, but for kids, they uh, they have a hard time, I guess, believing that, even though you you spend a lot of time trying to show them and tell them. And uh, you know, I think it's what parents. It's, 
experience all the time, you know, like don't go there. Don't hang with him. Don't date her. Don't. Yeah. You don't know what the heck you're talking about. Or they, they just do it. And, uh, and then we're in trouble. And thank goodness we were able to get out of it. And uh, Javin was a big key for that. Uh, a big key. And then we, we were able to change some things defensively and then help turn it around. Has your team responded in practice since then? The way you no, no, our team it? responds always in practice. It's, a, it's when the uh, lights go on. You know, what have they taken from practice to it? And overall, look, we've won 19 games. They've been terrific. We're nine and two in this conference. You know, these guys have done really well, but they're, it's not, you know, there's no perfect teams, you know. Uh, and, uh, and for our guys, you know, we have a lot of young guys. We have a lot of guys who are still trying to figure out exactly who they are. And we're trying to help them with that. Coach, it, it seems like there have been a few slow starts, especially. Slips? Slow starts, like. Yeah. Uh, the or fast that, starts by yeah. our opponents. Yeah, true. Yeah. Just, you, you, why don't you just like tell them not to put all the little guys in there. Tell, right. them, to, <laughs> tell them not to be ready when they play against us. You no, know, it didn't right. seem like you know, the Louisville Clemson is too that. Yeah, but part of, part of it is, part of it is the other guy. You know, yeah. this isn't golf where, you know, there's not anyone around the hole saying, get out of here. Right. Don't hit your ball. In. <laughs> or in tennis, you know, somebody stopping you from hitting it. You know, in this, in this game, somebody is trying to stop you from being good. And depending on what they're doing and what you're doing and their emotional state and yours, it produces this. That's, that's why it's a 40-minute game. So I'm not... You know, I'd rather not slip at the end, but I don't call it a slip. I think it's an adjustment. I mean, it, we're ready. You know, we're ready. You know, I, I, would I like to hop on somebody and beat them? Yeah, but that doesn't mean the world is uh, going sideways here. You know, it, uh, it just, it's part of competition. React to what is happening now. And that first TV timeout is huge. You know, you react to a bunch of things. You react to, you know, one, hop, what your opponent is doing. Are they doing the things that you anticipated X and O wise? Are they doing things the way you anticipate emotionally? How is the game being called? You know, it, games are called differently all the time. And you know, our, our game is a, is a series of adjustments and adaptations, you know, during the 40 minutes. And, um, and you have to do it quick because it's, you don't have time in between plays. Your, your main adjustments are at any stop action or at a timeout. And so, again, overall our guys have done a really good job of doing that and not waiting until we lose to make the adjustment. Like the BC game is a good example. We won. We deserve to win because of what we did instead of losing and learning why we lost. And so our that aspect of communication with our team has been really good. Have you always looked at that first TV timeout as yeah. that sort of stopping point to kind of readjust and reassess? Yeah, and and, and, uh, it, it's, uh, and maybe by the second, as far as how, like, is it going to be physical tonight? Are they are there touch fouls? Are there? Yeah, there is a variance. There's no no question about it. And one because you have three different people to win a game. You, you don't have to say, you know, the chance of variance is pretty high. And uh, uh, and also, like, sometimes the, the level of, the, the perception of the level of the game, you might let more go or more physicality or, or whatever. So you have to try to figure that out. Mike, what areas, if any, do you still have to harp on uh, yeah, for oh, Vernon to yeah. improve? Well, Vernon, you know, I, I think he's still adjusting to all the traffic around him. You know, he, he's, he doesn't play one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, 
there's a lot of physicality there. And, uh, you know, and how, you know, you're supposed to have a, like a forearm on, there's a lot of, there's a lot. And how do you adjust when it's not the forearm, it's someone holding you or whatever. And, and how do you adjust when there's two or three guys around you? And when you, you know, I think of, I think er, like about three weeks ago or so, uh, you know, when you get a rebound, there's a whole bunch of people like, he's trying to get it up too quick and it becomes a shot, not a score. And so there's still physicality. Now is he doing that because he's not hitting free throws? Yeah, he doesn't, or is he just doing that? Well, he's hitting free throws now. He, spend, he spends an inordinate amount of time working on it. So can you grab it and go up stronger? But it's a habit. You know, these things are, are habits, and they're, they're habits that are diff you can't teach really in practice. Uh, they're, they're, there's just the experience of playing in, these, in, in this in, in a game. And against BC, right at the end of the game, you know, we could have gone up nine or 11 or whatever. And he, you know, he took a shot. Now he got the rebound, he did all the things, but if he just goes up strong there, he might get a three point play. But he's 19, he's just learning, he's learning. It's still, you know, he's a freshman. But he's done great, not good. You know, he's, he's had a great, great year. Anything else for Coach? I want to ask you about. William Avery being back this year. Yeah. Talk to you about that. But what's it meant to have him back around, be around the team, and, and him coming back to get his degree? And yeah. Well, it's 20 years later. You know, just uh, his. He actually has one or two classes with a couple of the guys on the team, and uh, and just learning the difference in education two decades later, and uh, I'm proud of him. You know, because. Uh, he still has a lot of work to do. He had a really good first semester. He can't do much for us. You know, like he can't work with the guys. He's like a manager. And, uh, but having him around is great. Uh, uh, yeah, he's a great guy and you know, he wants to be a coach. And uh, he wants to get his education and thankfully our, our school was providing that for him. And, and uh, yeah, I wish there was ways of the guys who leave early to go to the pros could t continue better here. Uh, it's it's very difficult because we're not an online school. Right? None of our guys are, none of my players do a survey in, in the United States and find out how many guys are taking online courses. It'd be interesting. Yeah, it'd be, in, Burrow just said he, right, he, that's all he took. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, our guys, don't, there are no online. And same thing, and if they wanted to come back, there's nothing online. They, have, they would have to be here. And so it makes it difficult to continue your, your education. And uh, I hope sometime in the future we're able to like, figure that out. Because Jason Tatum would like to complete his degree. You know, we're trying to figure that out. And uh, trying to, try to figure it out. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks Thank a lot, man.